Hey guys, my name is Zachary and welcome to yet another video. Real quick, shout out to this guy for making the very smart decision of shouting out my channel. Now he is getting a shout out back because why not? Anyways, today we're checking out Universe Sandbox 2. Now I already made a pretty crappy and rushed video on it back around the time I started my channel, but I didn't really explain what it was. So to those of you who don't know, it's basically a universe sandbox where you basically get to do whatever you want in the universe i mean it's not like space engine where you can explore everything but there are like certain simulations like the solar system here where you can just mess with things so you can do things like add extra planets to the solar system and terraform mars or and humanity for the seven trillionth time so yeah that's basically what this game is and you can also just make your own custom simulations i guess we'll start with some of the solar systems that i've made we already know the epilogue system which is the one that I showcased back then. Oh my goodness, this is so unbelievably laggy. It's not even playing, it's paused. And I think I know why it's so laggy. <laughs> yeah, this custom solar system is quite a mess. Like all the asteroid belts are literally just rings around the star. I tried adding rings to planets on two separate occasions and both times it just ended up a complete mess. Here's another solar system I created and as you can see it is way smaller but way less laggy. Holy cow this frame rate is beautiful. Anyway to begin the star in the center is called Respos and it's kind of just a really small star. I'm actually kind of surprised it's able to hold this many planets. But I don't know, there's something charming about it, probably because I'm obsessed with the color red. The redder the better. Anyway, the first planet is called Dekun. I am not very good at coming up with names. If I ever become a father, I'm just gonna let my partner do the naming job for me. <laughs> but holy cow, for an ugly name, this planet is beautiful. I kinda wish Universe Sandbox would make Venus's texture look something like this instead of making it look boring and dull. It actually looks completely different under the atmosphere though. Yeah, this is like a total ripoff of Venus. Next up we have Yurikuni. It's got a very weird colored surface, but I like the red clouds in the atmosphere. It makes it look kind of dangerous. And next up we have Frensen, which is literally just the moon, but green. And then we have Dekun, which is spelled with two C's. Seriously, d d why am I so bad at naming? And it, it doesn't look bad for a habitable planet, you know, though this could use some vegetation. There we go. It is a good deal larger than the Earth, though. That's kind of strange. And next up, we have Terminate. This is the first gas giant, and it's actually almost as large as Respos, which is funny. Again, nothing too much to say. It's just... Eupentis is also another gas giant. It's a lot smaller, though. Smaller than Planet 9. Okay, I stand corrected. Something about this color is really pleasant, though. I don't know. <laughs> and then we have Morsen, which is like a dwarf planet. That is somehow even smaller than Ceres. And then we have Task is another dwarf planet that is about the size of Make Make. And Ida Skip, again, is a small dwarf planet smaller than Ceres. Perhaps the most special planet on here is this, Aquatune, which is two and a half times the size of Jupiter and is just completely filled with water. Don't ask questions, my solar systems aren't that realistic. And it's actually even larger than its host star. This size comparison here is kind of ridiculous, I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, Okay, moving on to one of my more unusual solar systems called the Giant Toshi system. Giant Toshi. Basically, there's this big star called Giant Toshi, what do you know? Which is totally not a DNEV ripoff. And every planet orbiting it is a gas giant, but each gas giant is larger than the sun. Well, except for Giant Brown, which is a complete loser. We don't talk about that planet. But yeah, there's giant blue, giant brown, which doesn't exist anymore, giant orange, giant red, which is the largest one because red is superior to every other color, giant green, which I think is the second smallest, giant yellow, giant pink, and giant dark, which is literally just dark red and dark blue stripes. And to prove that all of these planets are, in fact, larger than the sun, I made a size comparison. But as you can see, even though each of these are a lot larger than the sun, there's still nothing compared to their host star. And trust me, this is not the largest star that I've created. Well anyway, I think it's fitting that we move on from the giant system to the small system, which I just call city system. So basically it's a similar concept, except each of the planets are actually just habitable planets. And instead of everything here being huge, everything is tiny. So yeah, the city star is about the size of a neutron star. And I basically just use this color feature to make it look orange, but really... <laughs> Well anyway, each of the planets orbiting the star is just called City Planet 
some number because I am very original. The largest one, City Planet 5, is about two and a half kilometers across, while the smallest one, City Planet 4, only spans by about 250 meters across. So yeah, each of these objects are about the size of a city. Oh, but the one rule of this system, don't play it. All the planets are just gonna get scorching hot because they're so close to this giant city star, which is 480,000 degrees Kelvin. Yeah, and this will happen. And this is actually being played in real time. These are all going so fast at like a fifth the speed of light. All right, I guess this is the final system that I created and it's called Elements. This one is a lot more recent than the other ones. But basically the center is the star, which is plasma because stars are made of plasma. And then we have fire, which is more lava than fire, honestly, but yeah. Next we have hot air, which is this gas giant, which is steaming. And cold air, which I mean, I wouldn't consider 240 degrees Celsius to be cold air, but for real talk though, this planet is actually beautiful. And this is what it looks like without the atmosphere and clouds. Next up, we got Earth, which is both dirt and vegetation. This one is surprisingly good looking too. And of course we have water as another element. Um, this one looks pretty decent actually. I really like the dark blue atmosphere. But yeah, without the atmosphere and clouds, it kind of just looks boring. And finally, we have ice. I think I was planning to put snow here, but then I just gave up on the thing, so. And the funny thing about this planet is that there's barely any ice. This is with ice, and this is without ice. And yeah, that's pretty much all the solar systems I have to cover. But do you really think that solar systems are the only thing I make? I also just have some random simulations. So yeah, this looks pretty normal, right? It's just a size comparison of the planets in our solar system. Except, all these objects are actually tiny. They're scaled down. Yes, this is the size of the real Death Star compared to everything here. I actually have a custom object about the Death Star. But how about instead of going scaled down, we scale up? So this simulation explores what would happen if we were to scale up tiny things by a hundred billion times their size. So this is the size of an atom nucleus. Now, it's pretty tiny compared to this marble, right? Well, this is the size of the hydrogen atom. It is already twice as tall as this person here. Actually, like, three times. And this is just the smallest atom. This is the size of one of the larger atoms, called the cesium atom. And DNA is as wide as the Pyramid of Giza. This small virus here is twice as tall as the Burj Khalifa. And other viruses, like the coronavirus, are the size of Mount Everest. Yeah, even things on the microscopic scale are very different in size. The largest virus that I know of is called the Mimi virus, and it is 60 kilometers tall. And then we start getting into cells. And these cells are the size of planets. We have the red blood cell, the white blood cell, the skin cell, the pollen cell, and the plant cell. All these cells are as large as the Earth. Dust particles and salt grains mist, and hey, what do you know? We looped back to a small marble, which is almost as large as the sun. I got the idea to do this from a YouTuber called Metaball Studios, from his video called Micro World on a Human Scale. Just go check the channel out, it's actually pretty cool. But okay, let's move on to the final size comparison, the ultimate size comparison. Now this might take a while to load because there's a lot of objects here. I mean, this isn't quite as laggy as my um, epilogue system, but it's still quite laggy. Here we have a bunch of atoms and stuff, you know, like, although I actually really like this interpretation of color wavelengths. I love how I just put a bunch of real objects here, and then I just put Minecraft world. It stops after the stars, though. But you know what's funny with the view mechanic? You can also arrange these in any way you want. But you can also just do completely random, and all the objects will just scatter throughout. Okay, um, I may have lied about that being my last size comparison, I just remembered about this one. And this one's pretty simple, it's basically a size comparison of almost all of my saved objects. My smallest object is, funnily enough, called the End of Earth.
Real talk though, I'm actually pretty proud of this custom Jupiter that I made. It has these cool little bands and stuff. Here we have the ginormous planets. The mega planet, Lolven. The giga planet, Giblus, which is the largest star that I've made. And the giant Terra, which is a million times the size of the sun and the largest planet that I've made. This is what it looks like compared to the solar system. I also made this funny simulation of a boy eating ice cream. I basically just used a bunch of objects to my advantage, like bowling balls for hair. And basically just combined it all together to make it look like he was just in a park or something. So that's pretty much it for the simulations that I've made. You can actually check out other people's simulations that they've made. Okay, let's see what we have here. J1407 star system. What? Oh my goodness. Oh my golly. Look at this. You're telling me there are moons lost within this jungle of rings? Okay, let's see. We have this unnamed one. 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 And this unnamed one. What a great cast. If Saturn had these rings, it would look like this from our point of view. Next up is the Tylar system. I'm not really sure if that's the correct way to pronounce it because I don't know how to pronounce anything. But anyway, this guy has been working on the solar system for six months. That's like twice as long as I've been working on this one. Let's just begin with this one. So here's star number one. Let's see, we have this boring Mercury-like planet, this other Mercury planet, this much more interesting looking one, this habitable one with two Mercury-like moons and a habitable moon. Ironically, its moon looks way better. <laughs> and then we have this ice giant here with a literal planet orbiting it as well. With rings? Visitor from A4? Okay. Now moving on to star number two, we have these two small planets and these two small asteroids asteroids. This pretty habitable planet with a satellite ring around it. And then this frozen one, which actually looks pretty cool for a frozen one. How many satellites are there? Good god. And then we have this completely rogue planet here, which has a lot of moons orbiting around it. It even has like gas planets orbiting around it. Yeah, all of these are at least a quarter size of the Earth. This one kind of looks like Venus, except under the atmosphere, it's not Venus. This planet truly taught me how to not judge a book by its cover. And then we have this star here. This planet, this scorching planet, this somehow habitable planet, this other habitable planet, this other habitable planet, this frozen planet, this gas giant, this other frozen planet, this other gas giant, this other other frozen planet, and this other other gas giant, along with a couple dwarf planets. And finally, this lone sad one over here with only a couple moons. Really puts the sad and sad age. <laughs> Star Wars system? Okay, as a disclaimer, I'm not really uh, familiar with the planets in Star Wars. Anyways, we have this habitable planet. Yay, it's two times the size of Earth. Dang, how big is this star? Utpa Sol. Her Soro is scorching hot, of course. And Tactos is also scorching hot. Unistros is habitable, sort of. Flaus is also habitable? How does this look so good? Then we have Barbilly. Life on a millimeter. Asteroid has a millimeter. What? There's no way. This is a millimeter wide? No way. Oh my gosh, it's a millimeter wide. That's kind of cool. The atmosphere doesn't really match though. Oh, what? That's glitchy. Well, that's kind of cool. Ooh, what's this one? Four billion years ago. This is what happens when you don't make save files. This guy probably crashed his solar system and this is his most recent file. So the sun is normal. Mercury is much more gray and whitish than usual. And also ever so slightly larger as well. Still though, it's actually remained surprisingly similar to how it is today. Unlike Venus, where did it go wrong? Next up we have Earth and wow, even these orbits are crazy. Yeah, <laughs> There was much fewer land back then. Although what could be changed to be a bit more accurate is the water color. There we go, that's a bit better. Not exactly much better looking, but a little more accurate. And the moon just looks a little more intense than it does now. Mars was also covered in water. You know, this is before the radiation from the sun decided that Mars needed its atmosphere taken away and it lost all its water. Well, almost all its water. And then next up we have Jupiter, which literally looks exactly the same. There shouldn't even be a red spot. Like, why is there a red spot? If this was more realistic, Jupiter would be more 
this size. Saturn also doesn't seem to have gotten any change, so it obviously didn't have its rings during this time. Titan though, that was kind of interesting. And then we have Uranus and also Neptune nothing's changed. Now moving on to Pluto. Wait, what? Pluto? Never heard of it. All right, let's just jump ahead two billion years to two billion years ago. I am experiencing the lore right in front of my very eyes. Let's see how Mercury's doing. It still looks roughly the same, except it's ever so slightly more brown. Venus, though, this is looking beautiful. The Earth is also still mostly covered in water, although... I think this is after its snowball period. Mars though, yeah, it's looking a little sad since it's lost all its water. Jupiter still looks the same. Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, they all still look the same. Quasars, monsters on a galactic scale? No way. Oh, 50 billion suns. There's no black hole that has more than that mass. Remember my giant terror planet? This is what it looks like compared to the black hole. It's still pretty big. This though, holy cow. How'd you even manage to do this? This is insane. Yeah, this is what it looks like compared to the entire Milky Way galaxy. All right, let's check out these somewhat realistic gas giants. So the gas giants down here are just the kind of boring, you know, generic ones. These are brown, these are white, and these are purple. Wait, purple? That's not generic. And then we have a huge row of just rocky planets. I'm not really sure why they're included here. Although these ones are actually surprisingly good looking. Probably because they're red and I'm absolutely obsessed with the color red. And then finally we return to the actual gas giants. We have this mercury colored marble giant here. And then moving on to this velvet giant, which has the absolute most edgy color scheme ever considered to man. We have this glass giant? This doesn't exactly scream glass to me. And then finally, the shiny giant. And I'm just gonna say now, saying that shiny is an understatement here would be an understatement. Reminds me of something. I wonder what this could be. There's Son Mushi... Uh... Oh, it's just a parody of the solar system. We have the Son, then planet Machri, Venus, Earth, and the Mon orbiting around it. Orna? Then we have Mahres with its two moons, Phaebus and Damis. Then we have Jupiter and Saturn, and then Uranus, and then finally Neptune, and then of course Plocto and Shoring. You know, I'm willing to bet that the closest star system here is the Beta Atari system. <laughs> and then we have the Minecraft solar system, which, I mean, yeah. And apparently the nether is also inside of the overworld. Credit to Mad Planet Guy for making this system. And this is also another thing that the same dude made, a literal Minecraft dungeon inside. That's kind of cool. I think it would be really cool if you could implement the actual like cobblestone texture here. Okay, um, this video is getting really long. So I guess I'll just end things here. There is so much more to cover and I can't do it all in one video unless I want to make that one video like days long. Maybe I'll do a part two, I don't know. But I might as well just end this video while simultaneously I'm also ending humanity for the trillionth and first time. 